again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so this week we are fast approaching Christmas and it's around that time of the year when people are getting their Christmas trees. And today's painting is sort of a celebration of that, of selecting the cute, tiniest tree uh, in the whole Christmas tree lot in our imaginations today. So I have four colors to start with and then my four standard brushes. These come in a kit. You can find a link to all of the different materials in the description box below, as well as the materials page that also will show you. Gonna get those in the water cup off the side of the screen. And then the colors that I have to start for the background step today, I just have some ultramarine blue, black and white, and some gorgeous phthalo green. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. So we're gonna start real simple here with our background. I'm gonna use my largest brush here and a little bit of water on the brush. And I'm going to mix up a beautiful night sky color with some blue and a little bit of black and maybe a pinch of white because we don't want to go too dark. We want to still be in the blue range here. A little bit of a blue black though. Gorgeous sort of grayish. It's going to be our first color. A little bit more water there. And we're going to go with up and down brush strokes here. Filling into the canvas texture. Look what a beautiful color that is. And then I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap. I don't need to mix up some more of this. And you can even choose to not over mix your colors to get some good streakiness. But what we want here is a streaky background. So I'm gonna kind of stripe my way across. You don't have to come all the way down, just only about 60 or 70% of the way down. Maybe 70, just to be safe. I'm just going to work our way across with this blue color. We're working quickly here. And then I'm going to make a lighter version of this color by just sneaking in a little bit of white. Really simple. We'll go in a couple areas with light blue. And then just for a little bit of a magical touch, I wanted to have sort of the feeling of Northern Lights in today's painting. So we're gonna use some of my favorite color, phthalo green, just that turquoise color, which incidentally is the color of the Northern Lights. There's, well, there's a few colors that the Northern Lights can be, but this is one of them. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Just a little bit of white with that green and we get that beautiful frosty green color. And we're gonna blend that into our remaining little areas. And then a little bit sort of throughout as well because the Northern Lights sort of move like a river. So they kind of Snake down and around. But these are just sort of like the first little flickers of a good light show. I was lucky enough to witness a couple when I was in Alaska a few years back in the Pacific Northwest, gorgeous high northern part of the US calling to me again. Beautiful. So I wanted to bring a little bit of that into the sort of feeling today. 
Beautiful. Okay, so we have a nice streaky background there. With a little bit of that feeling of Northern Lights. Let's go ahead and grab our medium sized brush now. This one here. And I'm just gonna grab some white. Hopefully you still have a little bit of clean white. We're gonna go down here into our white canvas. And here we're gonna build our horizon line. So it's gonna blend a little bit with these colors and that's okay. I'm gonna go up fairly far and just kind of gently slope my way across with a little bit of a curve. And then I'm going to start filling that mountainside in with white. And again, allowing there to be a little bit of blending in the hills. That's okay. If it's a little bit too blue, you can add some more white right back on top while it's wet. Or you can also just let it dry for a minute. And when we come back for the second part, we can sort of finesse everything and add a second layer of snow just want to make sure that you have no empty canvas showing after this step. We got our nice horizon line. I like the way that's looking. And I noticed that I have just a little bit of empty canvas showing over here. So I'm just going to touch that up real quick. All right. And you can put any other final touches that you'd like with your background step. I think I'll probably need a little bit more white once everything is dry, but let's go ahead and step away for now and let this layer dry and then we're gonna come back with a whole bunch more. I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a dry background and fresh colors on the piece of palette paper here. So I have more of my phthalo green, some warm burnt sienna type brown, more of my beautiful ultramarine blue and some black and white. All right, and I also rinsed my brushes and got fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back on in. Gonna grab my medium sized brush now. We're gonna come back in with some snow as promised. After we let that layer dry, now we can add on some fresh snowfall. And just bring that right up to that same horizon line. I'm gonna leave a little bit of that blue streakiness still. And I've sort of created like a little area of multiple hills here. So I have this front hill and I have this little back hill as well. That sort of happened naturally in the mixing process with what, while I was filling in. So I'm gonna keep that. Try to keep that differentiation there between the two areas. Okay, just want to have a little bit of that fresh snow feeling still as well. I'm going to let that layer dry, retire that medium sized brush for now. I'm going to grab a smaller detail brush. I'm going to use the second to smallest detail brush now. And let's come in with some trees now. I'm going to mix some dark green with green and black and just a tiny little pinch of white. A nice dark, dark forest green. And I'm gonna do a couple little quick, simple trees. So these are like the trees that are in the lot that are big, full grown trees that we're not choosing today as our tree. We're choosing the tiniest tree which is the one that's on our little sled, but we had to fill out the Christmas tree lot here with the bigger trees that somebody else will take home. But we're gonna pick like 
kind of like the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. I always thought was such a cute idea. <laughs> And we're gonna give that little tiny tree some love. Working my way from the top down here with that dark green, little flicks of the wrist coming down, sort of diagonally here from the center all the way down to the little snow area and i have two trees over here you can have as many trees as you like in your little christmas tree area christmas tree farm i can decide i'm going to do three or four so four in my original i almost feel like doing three today since this little hill is so low Let's do three today. Making decisions, as Bob Ross would say. Working our way down here. Nice big Christmas trees. And they can be slightly different shapes, slightly different heights. You can even use your smaller detail brush if you would prefer a little bit more control. Okay, but that looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna take a little bit of white now. I'm gonna mix a highlight color to be sort of like a medium green. I'm gonna come back into my trees and just create a little bit of interest here with a second layer of color. So we started with that darkest green and we're doing a little bit of wet on wet blending here. Our trees are still wet. So we're putting this highlight color in right on top of that dark green. Little flicks of the wrist. Don't forget the ones coming sort of straight down as well. We'd be looking at sort of straight on at the tree as well as seeing the little flicks outward. Okay. And you can also add any more dark green if you need to tone any areas down or break it back up. Just like so. Okay, cute. Now we're gonna let that dry for a minute and leave it alone. So we're gonna put snow on it later. But I'm gonna rinse my brush. I'm gonna use that same brush. And now it's time for the sled. So we're gonna use our brown for the sled. I'm gonna mix a little bit of white in for a nice beige warm beige okay and the sled shape is fairly easy we want to come down a little bit so that the sled shape is here in the white that's going to just make that shape a little bit um, more bold kind of pop out of the painting more if it has more contrast and i'm going to start in the center here with just a horizontal line This is the very bottom part of the sled, the part that touches the ground. And I'm going to make it about as long as I want the whole sled to be. That looks about right. And then in the front part, I'm going to do a curve up and around a little bit. Coming back in there, and just thickening it up a little bit. If I get that main shape, that initial curve. 
Then I come back and even everything out. Okay, and then I'm going to do a second horizontal line coming up, maybe like an inch. And it's not going to be as long as our first line. And this is going to be that top part where you put stuff on the sled or where you sit on the sled. Very, very simple little just handy sled that we have to bring our tree back to the car, right? I say this like I've done this before. I have not. It's a fantasy. <laughs> it's not really that common to have Christmas tree farms where I'm at right now or where I grew up. Pumpkin patches, sure. Okay, and then two vertical lines like so to attach the shapes. All right. Then let's add a little bit of a highlight right onto our wet paint. Just through that same area. And just kind of finessing the shape even more, a little tiny bit. Little, very subtle highlight, just a tiny pinch. Okay, and I'm actually going to grab my smallest detail brush for the shadows here. I'm going to grab a little bit of black into my brown. Mix that up to make a dark brown. And I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go on the bottom part. of the top section. Like so. And then I think I'll go to the front part here. And then a little bit of the curve. And then underneath, once it straightens out, like so. Super cute. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna grab my medium size, or excuse me, my second to smallest detail brush. And just one last little final step around the sled. I'm going to take a little bit of a light gray. I'm going to do a few horizontal lines around my sled for a little bit of shadow there in the snow. Okay, just really subtle. Nice. All right. Moving right along. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more up in our sky. I'm gonna use that same brush. And I wanna kind of frame where I'm gonna put my Christmas tree. So my Christmas tree is gonna go right about here, right? So I have this space up here that I'm gonna address as well with a little bit of like frosty, swirly goodness gonna mix up a light blue with a little tiny bit of water and I have this space and then the tree is gonna be right here and then I have over here so I think I'll do a little sort of curly cue like that like so and then maybe coming down and around like so I'm going to do a few little brush strokes sort of around those first initial curly cues. And thicken any area that you want as well. Thickening the first part and then also sort of like the swirl. So 
sort of exaggerate the shape there and then just add a little bit of variety in the sizes of the brush strokes there the whip okay that looks pretty good a little wispy yeah that looks good to me and i'm going to take an even lighter blue and just do a quick little highlight in there as well just some frostiness or some whimsy because why not okay and cute little element to add up here as well with that very very light blue and my tiny little detail brush you can add a couple little sparkles these are like stylized snow flurries in my opinion so cute little sparkle like so and then you can also add like plus signs and those make a nice little sparkle as well wherever you like within your little flurry just to add sort of that fun cute storybook feel very cute all right we're gonna add some snow up there too with the back of our brush i'm gonna go around my flurries for now but i'm gonna add some snow in the center part as well but for now i'm gonna leave that area alone since i know that i'm gonna be doing my tree there so for now i'm just gonna bring some magic around the snow flurries and let's bring some snow onto our trees too while we're at it working our way back down from the top second to smallest detail brush now and some white just going to go in those trees and add a little bit of snow just as quick little brush strokes what a winter wonderland we have so cute and if you need to clean up this bottom area and bring your snow right up cozy to your trees you can do so in this step as well definitely very christmasy nice and cozy tucked in trees into the snow And just come on over to the other side. If your tree is still wet, you can give it a second to dry. But having a little bit of that sort of minty green blended in is also not the end of the world. So that's up to you. It's kind of like the colors of the tree are reflecting on the snow. It's a colorful, Whimsical rendition. Okay. Okay, looking good. I like it. And now finally moving on to our tree. The piece de la resistance, most important part of the painting. I'm gonna grab my second to smallest detail brush again this guy and load it up more with some of that brown. I think I'll add a little tiny bit of black just to have a slightly different tone of brown. And then we're gonna center it here on our sled. And I'm going to bring the first line right from the top down. almost centered. I'm gonna grab my smallest brush actually. I'm gonna thicken up the base a little bit but I'm gonna adjust it over to center it a little bit better. <laughs> That's okay. All right and then I'm gonna have a little base here. 
like a wood area, little cross of wood pieces that you know crisscrosses and holds it there to place, but we're looking at it from a side angle, so just a little rectangle like so. Okay, and then a little bit higher up. You don't want to do too tall of a tree because we're choosing the tiniest tree, right? And then I'm going to work my way down here from the top and just add little branches that poke out from those sides. And we won't have too many. But you want to go pretty much all the way to the bottom with the branches and then I'm going to grab a little bit of white or a highlight version of that same brown color. I'm going to do a quick highlight down from the top to the bottom of the tree. And then I'm also going to use this darker brown just to do a quick differentiation there of the different areas. Okay, and then I think I'll grab my second to smallest detail brush again. We're doing a little bit of greenery on our sad little tree right now. He looks sad, but he won't be in a moment. I'm gonna mix up my favorite gorgeous teal with our phalo and white. Lovely. A little bit more green there. Nice, vibrant, evergreen color. And then from the top here, I'm going to do a couple little sprigs. Feel free to use your smaller brush if you would prefer. And then we're going to kind of do the same idea here from the centers. And you're going to kind of cover a lot of the brown and that's okay. That's what we want. We'll have a lot of greenery there on our cute little baby tree. Almost sad to me that when we cut him down, it's just a baby. He didn't even have any time to live. <laughs> but th it's okay. It's just a painting. No trees were harmed in the making of this painting. Well, actually, oof. And brush handles. Ugh. All right, just working my way from the top down there. And I'm going to come a little bit further out as I get to the bottom ones. Those are going to be a little bit bigger. And maybe even kind of cross the bottom here. Little sprigs from the base all the way out kind of adjusting your shape as you go but not too much greenery because again he's tiny he's the tiniest tree but more than the charlie brown tree that one was really not looking good All right, looks pretty good. A little bit more going on up here. All right, I'm gonna grab my smaller brush now for some highlights and shadows. I'm gonna just go in there real quick with a slightly lighter minty green. And get some nice differentiation there. Making those colors pop looking good. All right. 
we'll add a little bit more greenery with this tiny brush. Just to make sure everything looks nice and small, tapered. Okay, we need a little bit of highlights in this section. Very subtle. And then a little bit of a darker green as well. You can even sneak a little bit of black into it. That same very tiny brush. Some nice dark shadows. Through each section, same idea. Should be looking pretty festive. Very cute. Right across the bottom there. Okay, and coming out, super cute, adorable. All right, now I'm gonna add a little bit of snow all around my cute little tree as well with the back of my small detail brush. Have a few from between the camera vantage point and the trees back there as well. There we go, all throughout the sky. Gotta give it that snowy Christmas look. And then let's add a little bit of snow onto our tree as well. Just don't want to blend too much with those colors. So if you need to, you can again take a little short break and come back and add. I want to go right into the little areas where the tree's branches would meet the trunk. I think I want to make this a little bit thinner while I'm at it. My white finessing things. Okay. A little bit of snow on each section. Gotta have snow on everything. For our winter wonderland, of course. Okay. Very cute. All right. And there we have our tiniest little tree. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you painted along today, I'd love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club. And it's free to join and it's for my students to share their work, whether it be from painting along with me or just from your own imaginations. We'd love to have you over there. And that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So until next time, Happy holidays and stay creative.